YouTube. It's Mark here making an update video. As you can see, I've been working on my grots. Um, I've had to narrate this video because the original audio was screwed up, so if I get out of sync here, forgive me. Uh, I'm taking my method as an inspiration from Nataku's recent uh, series on how to paint a bad moon orc. And this uh, grot is actually mostly washed. Uh, the only thing that's not washed is the gun and the metal. Everything else is used uh, with thin down paints over white primer and then lots of washes. Uh, so let's see if I don't. Of course I'll put some better picks up. Now here's what I'm going to start with. I'm going to start with the primered white model and the color I'm going to use is uh, GW Scorpion Green. Unzoom it there. Scorpion Green got my wet palette. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some scorpion green and I'm going to um, thin it out slightly. Uh, probably about one drop per brushful, one tiny one uh, tiny drop per brushful. And this is my first uh, painting in a video so forgive the out of fog and frame and uh, things like that. We're giving the paint a good thorough mix. Now the important thing to do with this method is that the green only, the color only has, has to go only where you want it. Uh, because we're going to be washing the other parts with a different color, uh, we can't have any real overlap. And the idea behind using the thin down uh, paint is that it will actually leave the white behind as kind of like a natural highlight, so you don't have to go back over it. So here I am painting skin. Unfortunately on this model there's not a whole lot of skin. Um, there's just the arms, the top of the head, and the feet. It's not going to take very long. Getting the arms. And you don't, while well, you do have to worry about uh, not getting the green over where you want the leather, uh, you can get it over where you can be painting the bolt gun without any problems because the bolt gun is going to be solid uh, while the leather is going to be a wash. And if you do get it where you don't want it, you can just uh, take the the, veil, the uh, brush primer. I use Vallejo Game Color uh, Brush White Primer and you can cover that up uh, before putting on the the washes, the washed uh, brown color you're using for the leather. So we're almost done here. Said I'm having to. I said I'm having to narrate this uh, because my original audio was horrendously fuzzy with no sound level at all. So I'm just about finished. Just getting the last little bits and pieces here. And I'm actually running out of paint. Almost didn't have enough paint uh, to finish the small areas that are on this model. sit here and watch the painting. As I said, this is also the first time I've tried to paint on camera with my crappy webcam, so you're probably not going to be able to see much. So hopefully there'll be enough time at the end of the video where I can post up some uh, some still pics. Well, here it is just about done. As you can see, the, I don't know if you can see it, but the white will actually said, stay on the raised areas and the green will flow into the lower areas, uh, giving you some really nice highlighting even at this early stage. Just getting the feet here with the last little bit of paint. Oh, the sound of silence. I'll zoom up. You can almost see it here. shows through. Now fortunately I've already done some uh, skin on other models for the next step. The next step is a pretty heavy wash of the GW uh, sepia wash. And this is okay to get onto the leather uh, 
because we're going to be washing the leather of the same color. See on this model here, I've already done some of the leather bits uh, in a uh, combination, kind of variety of scorch brown, bestial brown, and uh, snake bite leather. So we're just going to give this kind of heavy wash of the sepia, sepia. And of course you want it to flow down into all the cracks and give you some nice tone changes. I was going to change the tone of the skin, so you do want to make sure you get your coat nice and even. Again, this will flow down into the, the lower areas, leaving the upper, the um, higher areas more white from the undercoat, uh, resulting in, in natural highlights. And actually, I'm going to also wash the leather parts so because uh, I want to. And when they're done, it will actually get it will actually get a wash of a of uh, sorry Devlin mud. A little bugger got away from me. Especially on the uh, most exposed areas like the back. Make sure you get those um, creases in there really well. And the best part about this technique overall is just simply does not take very much time. And if you screw up, you can always just you know, put some more primer on and you're, you're good to go uh, to redo it. So now we're going to, I've also actually got a couple models that have already had some dry uh, sepia, so we're just going to do a green. These two models have had the sepia done already, so we're going to grab the uh, Thraka green wash, go over these guys, at least one of these guys real quick, with a heavy wash of Thraka green. This will return a very nice green color to the skin. Um, and you can control how dark the skin is, you can actually put on more than one layer, or more than one coat I mean. And even a thick coat. The more you put on there, the more green, the darker it gets. So you can control the skin color. You can have a variety of skin colors among a single unit. And again, with this, you want to keep the green only on the skin. You don't want it to go over on the leather because it will screw up the tinting on the leather. You also do want to make sure you get a nice even coat because again, uh, this does aff greatly affect the final color of the skin. So you want to make sure you get a nice even coat everywhere. Don't worry about the mouth because what I'll do at the end is I will go back and wash, fill the mouth up with uh, black, but that black wash, and then just do the teeth real quick and. Uh, bleach bone, and, you know, and then wash those with the Devlin mud. And that's really what I need for the teeth. Fortunately, there's not a whole lot of teeth or fingernails on these grots, so it doesn't take a whole lot, or does it really affect the model a whole lot? You can see, definitely see here, in the video is turning green, and the other one's still um, orangish, reddish, whatever. And it really, I mean, look at how long it took to do, do each step. So, you, I mean, you can literally do a whole model in, you know, under half an hour. Uh, so we're running out of time. I just want to say, again, uh, oh yeah, my piranha. I have got started on a good head start on my resin piranha. Uh, it's, I'm letting the base coat cure overnight, and then I'll do some details and some highlighting on it. And again, thank you, Nataku, for uh, the inspiration. Um, it's a really great effect. I'll try and put up some still pics here at the end. And thanks for watching.